Hello and welcome to this showcase of Serving Society, a special programme from the Institution of Chemical Engineers and ITN Productions, celebrating iChemie's centenary. From making everyday household items safe to creating medicines that save millions of lives, we take for granted the enormous contribution that chemical engineers have made to our world, especially over the last hundred years. We've served its society well for over a hundred years in terms of providing the materials and the energy and the water and, and, and all, all of the sort of the life-sustaining items that, that, that allow everybody to do what they want to do every day. The Institution of Chemical Engineers was established in 1922 and supported the industry as it kept pace with the world's needs, especially in health. Chemical engineers have been instrumental in helping save and improve lives, scaling up mass production of essential therapeutics. Today, this ability to take a basic element and then produce it for the masses helped in the daunting task of delivering COVID-19 vaccines globally. Biochemical engineers working with University College London were primed to scale up production of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine from day one. They were instrumental in its development and delivery. It's understanding how you can translate a process that has been manufactured in one vessel type or configuration at one volume or scale um, to another vessel which is bigger, um, probably very different in terms of its configuration from the um, vessel that you used to develop the process in, but at the end have exactly the same product with the same critical quality attributes um, that needs to be given to a patient. As you move to the later stages of the clinical trials, just before you get regulatory approval, you need to think then about the commercial manufacture of the vaccine. And that's where another one of our UCL graduates, Mark Proctor, came in. Uh, so Mark is a director of operations at one of the AstraZeneca manufacturing sites. And he basically put together the supply chain necessary to, to make all the vaccine. Science has earned the gratitude of the world by coming to its aid to help manage COVID-19. Now iChemie is marking its centenary by identifying areas based on the UN Sustainable Development Goals where chemical engineers can help tackle other major challenges such as climate change and sustainability. We're going to start off in February with sustainability in the environment and we're going to launch a sustainability hub that will help members to improve the efficiency and optimise the processes that they're operating in and really think about reducing footprints for carbon, CO2 and, and, and the like. Climate change and sustainability are not separate issues, they're inextricably linked and chemical engineers need to apply their system thinking to understand the whole picture, the relationship between the different components and make sure there's not unintended consequences from any particular courses of action. More specifically, chemical engineers are working to drive energy and resource efficiency, to develop new and better renewable energy sources to better store energy, be it through batteries or hydrogen or other means. They're working on waste, how to reuse it, how to reduce it and how to dispose of it most appropriately. And finally, they're working on um, sustainable food and recognising the nexus between food, energy and water and how all three of those need to be addressed in a sustainable manner. At Recycling Technologies, solutions are already being developed to tackle one of the most urgent problems, what to do with waste plastic, most of which is not recycled or reused. The company has created patented technology to recycle plastic waste into feedstock for new plastic production. In our area of the industry, we are indeed making an impact to a problem that we have today. I think, um, you know, plastic in the ocean is a reality and, uh, and we can see it and we can feel it. So young engineers have got the opportunity to come into our industry to have an impact, to develop solutions that would help a global problem. Young engineers are bringing fresh thinking as they enter the industry, attracted by the thought of making a real difference. There's very few other careers where you can really be at the forefront of that decision making and be able to have a you know, hands-on impact in trying to solve these problems. 
Andy Hemingway would agree. His degree in chemical engineering led him to the graduate training scheme at Wood PLC, which he says provided the chance to experience a huge range of work environments that really affect how people live. It's such a diverse career. Um, chemical engineers are involved in all aspects of, of changing the world. So, you know, if you're sat there and you're thinking, how do I make a difference? You know, how do I really change the world? Do chemical engineering because you'll get the opportunity and you'll be able to. Wood PLC, a global leader in consulting and engineering across energy and the built environment, is going big in its efforts to reduce CO2 emissions. It's working on Humber Zero with other industry partners to provide innovative solutions in helping to retrofit this vast industrial complex with post-combustion capture to save millions of tonnes of CO2 each year. We do need to make these um, first-of-a-kind type uh, investments and really start to, to make big steps towards uh, ca capturing carbon at scale and decarbonising industry in particular. That gets us most of the way, but we still need to warm up the solution. Students at Imperial College London are getting hands-on experience in learning how to tackle climate change via this carbon capture plant within the Department of Chemical Engineering. Having loads of people with like different backgrounds, people have like different ideas and different inputs. It will actually teach me a lot about just how is it that the carbon capture actually works and it actually directs and correlates very nicely with um, just the green energy sector that I'm actually going into and so I'm really, really excited to be doing this. A holistic approach to experiments ensures that problems are not looked at in isolation. Here, sodium ion batteries are powered by recycled carbon from waste. We're stimulating a circular economy whereby instead of putting waste in landfills which generates methane and, and contributes to global warming, we're taking biomass, we're extracting valuable components from it and using materials to so manufacture this into very high-end advanced functional materials. Waste from this nickel refinery in South Wales is now considered a valuable commodity. Algae is being grown from its CO2 effluent. Its inbuilt carbon capture helps it to photosynthesize. It can then be used for commercial purposes. For every kilogram of algae that we produce, we capture roughly two kilograms of CO2. So as you can see, this is a great way to uh, mitigate uh, climate change, but also capture and reuse that carbon. And one of the things we want to do is integrate this process further to work with local agriculture and take nitrates and phosphates from uh, animal waste and anaerobic digestion wastes and integrate those into this process as well. And therefore we'll generate a true circular economy that generates uh, value in terms of the product portfolio that we can achieve from the algae themselves. Valley Europe are working with Swansea University on ways to produce hydrogen using water and renewable energy instead of natural gas. Chemical engineers ensure the process is both scalable and risk-free. It needs to have a certain readiness level to allow us to invest as a company. So it is crucial that this work is progressed with industry so that we can have that real-world results. Working in the collaboration with the university gives a real good platform to give us real-world results that we can then use to uh, justify uh, capital expenditure and investment. University research is really driving change in chemical engineering. Students believe they are uniquely placed to understand how the world works due to the connection with different industries. I think the difference with chemical engineering is that it's, it's such a broader picture. You're not just doing the maths, you're not just doing the science. Actually, there's an interconnection with many, many different industries. You, you work with the chemists, you work with the people who are scaling up, um, so the mechanical engineers, the people who are doing that kind of work, and you, you work directly with the society as well, um, so yeah. <laughs> we teach the students the new technologies, the policy development, the economic aspects, the social awareness, the whole system thinking, alongside the technology development. So we don't want them only to be the future engineers, we want them to be the engineering leaders that can tackle the most pressing challenges and can drive the great transition happening in the chemical industry. 
as well as regularly evolving its curriculum to keep up in areas like the circular economy and the wider societal context, Loughborough University also uses digital technology to simulate real-world learning. I'm looking at creating a digital version of what's going on in reality. So like it's, in a sense, it's a bit like a video game. Video game, you might be running around. In real life, you might be running around. And you can simulate this between the two with a digital twin of the pharmaceutical process. I'm working towards making a process which digitally runs the exact same as it would in real life. The 2050 drive to net zero has fundamentally shifted the way of working in the chemical industry. And we need to create new jobs that do not exist even today to tackle some of the most pressing challenges to decarbonize our energy and industry. And that's our chemical engineering's job. Work to decarbonize the industry is happening at the University of Manchester's Department of Engineering. Acknowledging that how we live is a product of chemical engineering, but admitting that we face a huge challenge to reduce the footprint of all these technologies. We're looking at ways of finding alternatives to petrochemicals. So rather than using crude oil as the raw material, as the starting point, we're looking at using fermentation processes, so natural processes that we use to make things like beer. The ambition for everyone at Manchester Chemical Engineering is to ensure that their pioneering work gets out of the lab and into production. To help achieve that, Dr Winterburn has co-founded the company Holifirm. What Holifirm is, is doing, their driving mission is bringing kind of biosurfactants to market so we can use those to replace petrochemical surfactants. And surfactants are the ingredient that are in all our cleaning and personal care products. They give cleaning action, so we all use surfactants every day. Spinning out your own company is one way uh, to generate sort of commercial impact. The other way is to work with existing businesses. If you work with a, you know, a large corporate that has got huge resource behind them, then that can really expedite the translation of your research. It's that mix of ambition and collaboration with business that's attracting the next generation of chemical engineers. Well, you see all these big plants and factories and you wonder how can somebody control all this. That's what inspired me to take chemical engineering. Studying chemical engineering at the University of Nottingham, Malaysia, prepared Sadaf Hamati for her job as a senior business developer at a company in the Netherlands which helps car manufacturers create high-performance, sustainable tyres. The chemical engineering course was very well designed and well balanced in terms of teaching you all the technical and engineering uh, courses, but in the same time teaching you the transferable skills. So you're giving a lot of group and coursework, uh, group projects where you and your teammate need to work together. So this helps with your uh, developing your communication skills. You're working with broad range of uh, uh, peers and uh, students that come from different backgrounds, helps with project management, develops your leadership skills. And these are the things that I'm still using on my everyday. The courses here are in high demand, currently attracting 5,000 students from nearly 90 countries. In Nottingham, Malaysia, we have 20 academic colleagues who nurture our undergraduates and postgraduate students towards their uh, career preparation. So these academic colleagues have their expertise in food processing, environmental protection, as well as uh, process system engineering. All this area of research expertise enable the students to undergo their training during undergraduates and postgraduates with us so that th those training ground prepare the students for their career in the future. The university has so far produced more than 1,500 successful graduates, now established in a diverse range of careers, taking with them groundbreaking ideas covering environmental impact, climate change and sustainability. V1 is a volumetric flow rate going into the process. Nuclear power will be required to play a pivotal role if the world is to meet its sustainable development goals. Nuclear Graduate is a graduate development programme led by the people and skills organisation Energis in partnership with other nuclear sector employers and is designed to attract a diverse range of talent. Nuclear energy is a low carbon form of energy and is expected to gradually replace uh, fossil fuels as a main source of energy alongside renewables. So 
there's a lot of interest and a lot of growth in the sector. Energis works really closely with the nuclear sector to understand their skills needs. And the Nuclear Graduates Programme enables our partner organisations to recruit talented young professionals and provide them with a wide variety of opportunities that enable them to grow and understand the sector in its broadest possible context. The programme has won the ICME Global Award for Training and Development and is one of the most comprehensive the sector has ever seen. Nuclear graduates undertake three secondments with industry-leading organisations during the two-year programme and can design their own bespoke professional development. It gives you like a broad range of opportunities. The programme not only important on the job responsibility and experience and formal training, but also this kind of community sort of engagement as well. So that's kind of this broad aspect of the programme I'm really enjoying. Chemical companies have more of a focus on the environment, social responsibility and governance than ever before. But Scott Barder's values of working ethically have been at the heart of everything it's done for the last 100 years. The difference here is that the workforce own the company. It um, makes um, a range of polymer-based products uh, for composites, for adhesives and for functional, functional applications such as personal care. The founders, uh, Ernest Bodder and Dora Scott, that they were Quakers. So when they set the company up, they set it up with some real fundamental values. And that was really about doing no harm to the environment, but it was also doing social good and treating everybody equally. Employees have created a vision for 2036 and have set up an Operation Sustainability Committee to improve emissions and energy usage over its six manufacturing sites. The primary objective of that committee is to help Scott Bader achieve the 60% target in scope one and two emissions. Mapping our consumption is a logical first step, especially when it comes to energy. And then moving on from there, uh, the sites have to explore the different improvement options and then they're responsible for creating an action plan that's specific to their site. The next stage for us is really to start improving the sustainability of our own products themselves, you know, be that based on biological raw materials, be that um, you know, recyclable. So we have a significant research and development activity today, really looking at how we develop those materials for the future. The Global Engineering Project Management Consultancy Atkins is working hard to maintain a sustainability drive across many sectors, including energy, transportation and water. Water is facing a challenging time due to its energy consumption. Well, the water sector uses a lot of energy. Um, up to 3% of the UK's uh, total energy consumption is in that sector. And that's mostly in pumping and aeration uh, to ensure safe drinking water to customers and protect the environment. Um, population growth and climate change and environmental protection mean that we're moving water further and further, uh, particularly to the water stress southeast. So really the key challenge is to meet the uh, needs of society and environmental protection while working towards uh, a net zero. Atkins is supporting a route map to net zero for the sector in alignment with guidance published by both ICME and Water UK. We established our engineering net zero uh, initiative and that provides a framework for our engineers, scientists and project managers um, to support our clients on their journey towards net zero and following that Water UK route map. Um, it represents thought leadership, carbon accounting and reduction throughout the asset life cycle, uh, from strategy, design, uh, construction, also through operation and end of asset life recycling. World leaders in CO2 reduction, KBC, are also supporting their clients in their efforts to address climate change and sustainability. It can now very accurately predict the carbon intensity of fuels, the carbon intensity of products, uh, how we make the fuels, uh, how we can then begin to remove carbon and substitute hydrogen or uh, synthetic fuels or e-fuels as they're called. We've got the skills, experience, software, whether it's a refinery producing transport fuels, a petrochemical site producing chemicals, somebody producing building materials, we're helping them to reduce the amount of energy that they use. Reduction in energy means reduction in uh, carbon dioxide output. The company believes decarbonisation is no longer a choice, but a global imperative that's driving industry change. Due to the current environmental conscience, our clients are changing the way they produce 
chemicals and fuels. And on top of that, reducing energy consumption drives competitors to also reduce energy consumption. What most excites me is that we can have a real world impact on the energy transition. And we can really make a difference as chemical engineers in the world to become a more sustainable society. Not only do chemical engineers have to concern themselves with reducing the environmental impact of their work, but they also have to ensure that the materials used for everyday items are safe. To help them keep up with constantly changing regulation, Mike Penman set up Penman Consulting. Every single chemical that's put onto the market or manufactured is subject to chemical regulation. Nowadays, you have to provide a large amount of information to regulatory authorities and prove that the chemical is safe in its use. They've developed a programme that brings together all the information a company needs in one place. It's called Active Steward. It gives updates to make sure chemicals comply with the latest regulations. We combine the science and the technology together, which is very rare to do. And this in turn will help us overcome next generation issues that the chemical industry are bound to face. And as the world takes a more sustainable path, more companies are asking for help to understand and comply with new ways of working. Indeed, as we move towards more circular economies, this comes with increased customer demands, regulatory requirements, but also the industry will play a critical role in actually meeting the ambitions of the European Green Deal, the Chemical Strategy for Sustainability or the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, industry is in transition, incorporating all these new concepts into each and every step of the value chain. We help them navigate through that, uh, manage their sustainable strategies with our next generation products to achieve. Global safety and security company DECRA are mindful of their sustainability obligations as they provide technical safety and human reliability solutions to industrial operators to reduce the risk of serious accidents. Being a process safety engineer involves ensuring clients manufacture their products uh, without causing harm to people or the environment or any neighbouring facilities. Firstly, we identify the hazards either by the material or from the process itself. And then we assess the risks. Um, and finally, we introduce barriers, either preventative or protective, to stop an adverse event from occurring. I do a multitude of safety testing, um, such as the adiabatic dual calorimetry, which is a key method that we use to uh, test whether or not processes are safe or not. Chemical engineers spend many hours in the laboratory assessing new processes developed by chemists to understand their potential hazards and simulating what could happen in a worst case scenario. The irony of what we do is that when we do our job really well, nothing happens. The company just carries on producing, but what we're dealing with is events that are extremely low probability, but extremely high consequence. DECRA is committed to putting human life at the forefront of everything they do while keeping an eye on new technologies. Some people talk about the challenge to the future of work around, as a result of digital and technological change. But fundamentally, um, whatever happens in the technology space, you still need the human context. So looking at it, members will be increasingly involved in helping to deliver, optimise and make more efficient all of the processes that serve society.